Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Full Potential Show. I'm James Rick. This is your number one non-boring source for personal development. And today on the line, we have Ross Bernstein. He's a best-selling sports author and motivational business speaker. Our show today is about how to go from good to great as an individual. Uh, we talk about the DNA of champions and how to get that into your DNA and start thinking like a champion. Uh, Ross has written the code. It's unwritten in unspoken rules in sports. And today we are very happy to have him on the Full Potential Show sharing how you can think and get that DNA like a champion. Ross, thank you so much for being on today's Full Potential Show. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Now, Ross, I know you have a, an interesting uh, background. Uh, you've kind of been all over the place. You, you, I mean, you're a best-selling author. Uh, you speak all over the country. You've written more than 50 sports books. <laughs> this guy loves sports. Um, and, and you speak a lot about what you've learned from athletes and taking that and applying it in the corporate world. And before that, uh, I understand you were working with former Disney executives in a, in a startup. I mean, so you've been kind of all over the map. What for you is your passion? Is it the business? Is it the sports? Is it the combination? Hmm. That's that's a great question because I talk a lot about passion in my in, in my program when I do speak. But you know, I I love sports and uh, my my long story short, I was a walk on at the University of Minnesota to play hockey, and they've got a great hockey program there. Most of the kids get drafted, play pro, and I I got cut. And uh, after I got cut, it. Uh, I was pretty devastated, but it turned out there's another job opening on the team. It's for the team mascot, Goldie the Gopher, the big, giant, smelly rodent. And uh, there were two criteria for the job. You had to be a decent skater and a complete idiot. And I apparently fit on both accounts, and I got the gig. So I became a mascot, and I wrote a book about it my senior year in college. It was called Gopher Hockey by the Hockey Gopher. And I kind of made lemon into the lemons, and I've kind of been able to stay in my passion for all these years later and 50 books later I've I, I love sports and I've found a way to monetize it and make it part of my career so every year I write three or four new books and I uh, speak all over the place and I've been able to interview thousands of professional athletes and I've really learned a lot of things from them over the years and I've been able to translate a, a lot of that back into business through my program called the Champions Code. So it's pretty pretty interesting stuff. Well, it's a good thing you didn't get typecast as the gopher. Otherwise, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be going on these speaking gifts. No, 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 we don't want Ross. <laughs> we want the rodent. Bring the rodent. <laughs> After spending time with the Disney people, uh, being with Mickey, I, I, I said, hey, I'm, I'm the real rodent here. <laughs> so, all right. So, so you've got this inside knowledge of what it's like to be with all these athletes and now these are athletes that are in the top of their field, right? I mean, they've made it to the next level. They these are champions. Yeah, absolutely. The the the, the people that I interview were, were and the people that I talk about in my program were, were talking about you know Peyton Manning and Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan and and you know all sorts of different men and women. Really, really, what I talk about is the differences between athletes and champions. Um, champions aren't necessarily people who've won championships, as I've learned in sports. It's the way people do the little things. It's the way they lead. It's the way they act when no one's looking. It's the way they know the difference uh, between the, the, the fine line between cheating and gamesmanship in sports. It's the way they are willing to assume whatever role is asked of them on their team. It's the way they'll uh, uh, just do all the extra little things, working harder than everyone else. And I really try and relate those things back to business because the same characteristics of great leaders and CEOs are the same characteristics that are found um, in champions in sports. So, you know, for instance, Barry Sanders, great running back for the Detroit Lions, Barry never won a thing for the Lions. The guy was one of the most respected players in the NFL history, though, because one of the things Barry did was every time he scored a touchdown, you know, you'd never see him out in the end zone dancing or taunting a guy or showing someone up. Instead, he'd hand the ball to the referee, walk over to the sideline, act like he'd been there before. And then afterwards, in the postgame presser, he'd say, uh, when someone asked him about that touchdown, he wouldn't take any of the credit on himself. He'd pass it all along to his offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. And things like that that really make people unique and really different. And I really try and share those takeaways with, with companies so that they can apply them to their own businesses. Now, what do you think, before these actions started to take place, did they sort of assume this you know, from other athletes? Or where do you think they got this mindset that made them so different that then carried over into their behaviors? I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's baptism by fire. I think, I think a lot of things are learned, you know, um, I, but a lot of stuff, you, you know, it's innate. Um, I talk a lot about motivation in my program, but I use very specific examples from coaches and athletes. For instance, um, you know, Vince Lombardi, 
the iconic coach of the Green Bay Packers, won six six world championships. You know, Vince was convinced that you couldn't teach hard work. Uh, you can teach a lot of things, but you can't teach hard work. Therefore, he recruited hard workers and figured he could teach other things. Mm. Uh, like we were saying off air, you know, you can't teach seven feet. You can't teach a guy to run a four three forty, but you can teach other things. So certain coaches that really understand motivation try and recruit people. Just like like in the iconic book, Good to Great, who gets seats in your bus? You get to decide who you want on your team. Uh, great coaches understand how to motivate certain people by pushing certain buttons. They understand how to put people in certain roles to get the best out of them. And that's what's really fascinating, whether it's Pat Summit, the University of Tennessee, Lady Vols women's basketball coach, or um, Bill Walsh, the iconic coach, the San Francisco 49ers, um, when he created the 49er way, a culture of winning based on all these fascinating different things. So I'm really interested in how people get from point A to point B because there really is no one right way. Well, what stands out for you, though? I know there's no one right way, but I mean, you know, people that are watching right now, and they're saying, you know, I'd like to elevate my game to a level of a champion. I mean, there's there's so much uh, not only reward personally, but also in, in so many ways, it's that one percent that really sees a lot of the the perspective and, and uh, you know, getting to the cutting edge really does have a lot of rewards personally, materially in so many ways to get to that one percent. There's, there's a lot of people that want to get there, but obviously not everybody can get there. It starts with the mindset, it sounds like, and it really is an attitude. And as a leader, we have to find the championship mindset before we ever win a championship. And as individuals, we have to have the championship mindset before we ever win a championship or get on a championship team. What are some of the most basic components of a championship mindset or attitude somebody that is in a position right now where they say you know i could probably do this better like yeah you can't teach hard work but somebody who is willing to take it up a notch and they say just give me a starting place what would you recommend somebody do to get the ball rolling in the direction of being a champion Hmm. that's great you know i i really just think it starts and stops with with your work ethic I, i really do because you just you you um the difference between, you know, when people become professional athletes, th- this is the best of the best. This is the very tip of the pyramid. You know, you've seen all the statistics of what numbers of people actually make it from, from high school to college to pro. And then to become a pro bowler or, mm-hmm. or an, an all-star, uh, it, it's such a finite number of people. And really, it just boils down to there's just no off-season. Uh, I talk a lot about Lindsey Vaughn in my program, the iconic gold medal winning skier, uh, probably the best women skier in history and, and I just talk about the discipline that she possesses you know when other people are out having fun hanging out in the villages of these exotic you know ski chalets and, and all over the world you know she's up working on a BOSU ball working on her core training she's working with nutritionists talking about different types of diets and, and, and metabolic testing she's testing different hybrid waxes on the edges of her skis, hoping that under certain wind conditions and ski scenarios or snow scenarios, she might be able to edge out an extra hundredth of a second, which in her world is the difference between gold and silver, Mm -hmm. which is the difference between tens of millions of dollars in in endorsement money. Mm -hmm. So really it's, it's this mindset about, you know, everyone that makes it to that point is, is amazing, but to get from good to great, that's it's, it's these little things and you see, you know, I started when I wrote these three books called The Code about the unwritten, unspoken rules and um, about football and baseball and hockey. And, and it was really fascinating. And I started to see some trends, some common denominators, patterns developed. And you started to see this over and over again, whether it was a, a, a college wrestler or an Olympic sprinter or uh, a professional football player or a hockey player or whatever, and there are definite traits that are common. So if people are out there trying to see what they can do, you know, it really starts with hard work and just doing what you think needs to be done to get to the next level, understanding communication with your leaders and what motivates them, mm-hmm. communicating what motivates you, and then just shutting up and doing it because there's really no excuse. What I hear, what I like, get as sort of the nuggets from your studies with all these people is that one – they have a mindset for excellence. Like they believe they really can. They can really get there. And then, yes, a great number of people can be these professional athletes. But the difference between that one hundredth of a second now, where it really counts, where it could mean the difference of, like you said, a gold medal and a silver medal, it's that work ethic of I'm so passionate about this. I want it so badly that I'm willing to 
forego the, the, the chateaus and the villages and the, you know all the fun to focus on getting just a little bit better in this field. And I guess, you know, the questions that this opens up, Ross, is, is, you know, is that the way like that? You know, you got to either really love it or, you know, be willing to make a lot of sacrifices. And of course, you don't want to hear that. But is that really the way? I mean, and it's before you answer that, uh, I'm I'm reading uh, Benjamin Franklin's autobiography right now. And, you know, he really focuses in, in his virtues, first of all, which is the part where, like Vince Lombardi said, you can't teach hard work. You probably can't teach somebody to care enough to start developing virtues. They just have to care for themselves to develop the virtues of character and, and a lot of the things that you talk about that make these great athletes. But then from there, you can't teach this work ethic. Nobody's going to push that skier to understand all these little scientific factors. They're going to, you know, at some point, they're going to say, the hell with you. I'm going to the village. I'm going to have a hot chocolate, you know? <laughs> so, so my question is, is that. The key, I mean, really, one, having the passion, but then two, sacrifice, sacrifice to the point of excellence. I mean, if that's your passion, that's what you want to do. I mean, you know, the old cliche, find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. I, I think you and I are probably uh, close to that, doing what we love to do and, 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 and live in the dream. And professional athletes are fun to hang out with because they're so incredibly passionate. Their whole lives have been built uh, coming to an apex for this. You know, this is their time when they and they know they're on a. You know, it's it's a very short window. It's it's uh, it's fleeting. It's 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 not sustainable. So so there's that sense of urgency too. Yeah, and they've got a you know, especially in the Olympics, your whole world comes down to one race. Oftentimes, you know, this difference between you know, it's such a thin razor edge for how they live, and it's it's pretty amazing. But you know, if you're passionate about what you do and you want to have the ultimate success, I mean, you got to find out what motivates you. You know, in my in my program, I, I make it very personal. I, I talk about what it what what I see. I'm I'm media in Minnesota with the Vikings, the Wild, the Twins, the Gophers, the Timberwolves. So I get a chance to spend a lot of time in the in the dugout, in the locker room, the clubhouse, behind the scenes. And you see a lot what's in people's lockers. Mm. So I ask people what's on their desk, because if you're not putting it out there, what your passion is, what you really want. Um, you're you're not going to get it. So I, I make it very personal. I have pictures of my wife and daughter. I have pictures of me playing in celebrity hockey games and celebrity golf tournaments and traveling to Vancouver for business and you know speaking engagements and skiing at Whistler. Are these things vain? Sure. Are they egotistical? Yeah. But do they motivate the hell out of me? Absolutely. And that's what I want to keep do. I, I want to keep getting that phone call from mom that says, "Honey, I saw you on CNN this morning, and you looked cute. I love that. It <laughs> motivates me. So I want to keep doing it. I know I got to keep writing books. So people need to keep finding out. I mean, if if you just want to have a job, then then you're fine. But if you want to be the yeah. best, and you're motivated by money, and you want to make a lot of money, then you need to do these things so that you can make a lot of money. I mean, if you don't love selling insurance, mm -hmm. that's fine. Maybe you love spending time with your grandkids or hunting or fishing or whatever. Then you better be pretty damn good at your day job so that you can do those things when they count. And you gotta be, you gotta find what motivates you and really be hungry. You really do. If you don't, if you don't make it personal, it's not going to happen for you. Well, you know your mom's going to call now and say, "Honey, I saw you on the Full Potential <laughs> show. You look so cute." I hope so. Because <laughs> you know she's one of our biggest fans, right? I know. You knew that, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's a groupie <laughs> so all right ross well we're about to wrap up here i wanted to bring up one more point before i get any final thoughts on you know being that champion I, you've given us some really great insights today and the one thought and you kind of brought it up a little bit when you said you know your family is this motivating force for you in addition to all these other things and that is the downside of this mindset you know because i've heard things like you know michael jordan or some of these big time champions have focused so narrowly on what is important to them in their passion, in their sport, that they have excluded other areas of their life. They were not balanced. You know, their marriages, their 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 parental abilities were actually hindered by this narrow focus. So it can be a double-edged sword. It can create the kind of excellence and Olympic gold athletes that, you know, come from this great focus, but it can also lead to the detriment of other areas that you should focus in uh, if you are intending to develop these other areas. So I want to get your thought on that and then get any final thoughts before we wrap up. Well, I, I totally agree. And when I, when I speak, I, I, I challenge people to create their own code or their own mission statement. And I talk about how you need to have a personal code and a professional code. And then I talk about Tiger Woods. Tiger has an amazing professional code. The way he trains, the way he studies film, the way he breaks down the game, and you know, everything slows down for him because he's so amazing as a professional athlete, just as truly a student of the game. 
Personally, you saw what happened. His life became a train wreck, a caricature of himself. Look what happened to his professional life when his personal life went to hell. Mm. If things aren't going well at home, they're probably not going well in the office and vice versa. You've got to have a well-rounded, balanced life. You're absolutely right. You're right. People do get focused. Um, you know, I, I've become an expert in hockey fighting, of all things. I've written this book. This <laughs> well, that's a fun one. That's something you can be an expert at. That's you know, it's fun. And yeah. whenever there's a big brawl, I, I, I've had the CBC roll up a satellite truck in my driveway. Hey, we need, to, we need you to break it down. It's like, okay, I, I'm the guy, I guess. But, <laughs> right. you know, this last couple of weeks, we've lost three NHL enforcers. One of them I was two years into a book project with, Derek Bugard. He was the fighter for the New York Rangers. And... Um, these guys were so focused on what was going on that, you know, tragically, they their lives were, were taken far too short. Suicide, drug and alcohol overdose. A lot of times, people do lose their, they kind of lose their moral compass. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they lose their way. They become so focused. And, and when sometimes when things, when the game ends, they don't know what to do with themselves because mm-hmm. everything has led up to this. So it is tragic in that regard. But, um, you know, it's just... it. You have to do what I talk about in my program. The, the crux of it is about doing things the right way. I talk about accountability and ethics and about following your moral compass, doing things the right way, understanding that fine line between cheating and gamesmanship as it relates to business. You saw what happened to Enron and Fannie and Freddie and AIG and Lehman Brothers. When you lose that, when you lose touch with reality, that that's what can happen. You saw that with Bernie Madoff. Yeah. You know, so, that's the point here or there really makes a difference. So it's about doing things the right way. And, and what I also hear you saying, Ross, is doing it consciously. You know, you can be focused on being an excellent athlete, being a champion, but you can't lose consciousness to other areas that are important that make up a life, a human life that is worth living. So bring that consciousness. And, and finally, Ross, last point, any final advice for people that are listening right now and saying, gosh, I got a lot out of this, but I want to be that champion in my life, in my business, and I need one more thing to get me over the edge. Is there one final thought you want to leave us with? Well, they've got this new thing now. It's called the internet, and it's got amazing research capabilities. If you're not using Google News Alert, if you don't have a social media strategy, if you're not keeping up in the 21st century, you're dead. I mean, there's really no reason you can't be doing all the homework in the world and every potential client, every sales lead, making warm calls instead of cold calls. It's amazing the access that's available. And and lastly, you know, I get calls every week from aspiring authors, aspiring speakers. My greatest advice is shut up and do it, just like the old Nike commercial, Hmm. because there's just absolutely no substitute. If you love it and you want it, go do it. It's free country. God bless America. Just go do it. And, and take it to the next level with that research. Like you said, there's so many opportunities now to learn, to grow, and to expand, and to reach out to people and, and not have it be a cold contact. I love that. Uh, you can learn more about Ross Bernstein, rossbernsteinspeaking.com. Ross, where can they pick up the book, The Code, if they're interested in sports or hockey fighting? Uh Either of my websites, rossbernsteinspeaking.com or bernsteinbooks.com. All right. And I know you do more than that, much, much more. And you do a lot of corporate speaking about how to think like a champion. So if you're a company out there that would like to raise your culture to the next level, Ross is your man. Ross Bernstein, rossbernsteinspeaking.com. Ross, again, thank you so much for being on today's show. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers. It was was great having you on. And everybody who's listening and watching right now, be sure and subscribe to the Full Potential Show for more great insights like you got from Ross here today and other freebies that you'll get from experts on the Full Potential Show. Be sure and subscribe today. Ross, again, thank you so much and have a blessed day. Well, that concludes this week's episode of the Full Potential Show, your number one non-boring source for personal development. I'm James Rick, and if you want to get more positive programming for your brain absolutely free on a weekly basis, just visit fullpotential.com. If you like the Full Potential Show, you're going to love the Full Potential Club. What would you like most as a Full Potential Club member? Be two to three times more productive? Do what you're passionate about? Have more energy? Reduce your work hours? Travel the world? Enjoy an amazing lifestyle on a frugal budget? What if you could do them all? James Rick has been there and done it in ways that few people have. For anyone serious about taking their life or business to the next level, you know you've got to do more than just watch. You've got to do. Join James Rick and other like-minded people for an incredible $10 a month at fullpotential.com slash club. Be educated. Be empowered. Be the best version of you. Fullpotential.com slash club. Try it free for 30 days.